All right, peace and blessings, everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, this is Richard Taylor. I'm back with another video, and this video is probably going to make some people mad. Uh, but when you tell the truth, you put yourself in a position where, you know, people may get agitated uh, because of, you know, a lot of people don't like the truth or don't like the truth being spoken uh, in certain arenas. But nevertheless, you know, I, I'm used to being the bad guy, you know, as, as the Bible says, you know, in the last days, people would rather believe a lie than the truth or they'll call good evil and evil good. So uh, with that, I'm going to get right into it. Now, everybody knows right now it's election time in Goldsboro, North Carolina. And in election time, what I've noticed within the past three or four years that I've been back home um, with helping some friends or supporting some friends who were running back in 2019, I saw the insidiousness of the campaign trail, uh, especially uh, with people at the polls. Now, what I mean by that is people were at the polls and they were advocating, you know, people who were not running, but, you know, some people were out there advocating, passing literature out, you know, about the candidates they want, but they were also speaking ill about the candidates they didn't want or the candidates who were against the person that they were promoting. Now, um, I've heard so many things. I've seen so many things within the past, you know, four years that, I just decided, okay, one day I think I went out there to support, you know, a few of my friends who were running. But the next day, I said, I'm not doing this anymore. And I didn't go out any that year. And, um, you know, I had a, had a few of, of, of the people who I supported won and a few of them who lost. Nevertheless, that opened my eyes to what was going on uh, in that arena where, where people were just outright nasty uh, just outright disrespectful to other people who may have been promoting or advertising or lobbying for an opponent of the person that they were advocating or lobbying for. So um, within that arena, I began to learn cer certain things and I began to hear certain names, right? And of course, this year I've begun to do more research. I've I've, I, I, I've interviewed several of the candidates. And if you know me in the political arena, I don't have a dog in the fight. Like, I don't depend on any candidate to make my life better. You know, Richard Taylor is in the, the majority control of his life. And there is no candidate in City Hall, in the White House, in the state governor's legislative office that's going to make my life better. I have to do that on my own. But nevertheless, that's a whole other different subject. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but one name that I begin to hear uh, within the political arena around 2019, that's when I first started to move back here from Virginia, I heard the name of Clifton Broadhurst. Actually, I just heard Broadhurst, right? The Broadhurst ballot or the Broadhurst team or, you know, he's on the Broadhurst ballot. So in 2019, I didn't really understand. So I began to ask questions and who is this Broadhurst guy? You know, who is this Clifton Broadhurst? Like the way I heard his name, it was like, you know, he was the, the Al Capone of, you know what I'm saying, this, this, this voting thing. Or he was like the lucky Luciano of the election process. Like, this guy, you know, you wanted to be, it was it was also, it was almost mythical, you know, of, of, of hearing that name. Well, Broadhurst, or he's working with Broadhurst. Or, you know, Broadhurst is, you know, he, he's, he, he's doing something for Broadhurst. So, at that time in 2019, I didn't really grasp the totality of what was going on. But, you know, within the past three years and definitely within the past, you know, few months, which I've been involved in this election process just by interviewing the candidates. Like I said, I don't have a dog in this race. You know, I know there's a lot of candidates. I'm not going to influence. I'm not going to try to persuade anyone to vote for anyone else. I, I like to let people do their own research and make their own decisions. However, it has been 
discovered or revealed through my own personal research. Like nobody had to tell me this as I continued to listen and dig and ask questions, general questions that apparently the political process in Goldsboro is somewhat kind of run, you know, almost as a pay to play endeavor. Uh, meaning, you know, a lot of people have been engaged in this process of paying for political endorsement. Now, what I mean, um, Mr. Broadhurst, and I, like I said, I haven't met him. If you want to sit down and talk to me, my name is Richard Taylor. My name is 919-587-7782. But apparently... Uh, Mr. Broadhurst has a an elaborate political machine where candidates who are running for public office, various public office, I even uh, pulled up an article about judges who were, um, I guess, engaged in soliciting Mr. Broadhurst's service. But nevertheless, candidates may solicit Broadhurst, pay him money, for their name to be on his sample ballot and also to be endorsed by his campaigners or his electioneers that sit at the polls and approach people who are coming to vote with their recommendation and their sample ballot saying, you know, this is who you should vote for. If you stay in District 3, you should vote for this person. If you stay in District 5, you should vote for this person. If you stay, you know, if 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 you are voting for the mayor, vote for this work person. Now, he pays people to actually get out there and do that, but also people pay him to have him give his people the information to promote them in that manner. Now, this is all speaks of, you know, it doesn't represent the political process that, you know, I was come to believe. I, 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 I have come to believe. And I believe that people should go out to the polls under their own volition and with their own knowledge and resources and their own information to make an informed decision about who they are going to vote for. And I hope most people go out there and do it. However, there are some people who are completely ignorant of the political process in their town. They don't even know maybe what district they stay in. They don't even know who's running. So it is those people who are more susceptible to be approached, to be persuaded, to be influenced by those at those polls. And maybe that person at the poll knows that individual who's handing them that information and saying, vote for this person. They're going to trust that person. Maybe they grew up with them. Maybe that person is a relative of them. But they're going to take that person's information who have been paid to promote this individual candidate, whether or not that candidate may be the best one for the job or not. They have been paid to promote this person. Therefore, they may be influencing citizens who are unaware of even who's running, of who to vote for, and only because they have been paid to do so. Now, I can forego this act. If the people were not paid, if the people genuinely believed in this in, in this candidate and got out there on their own volition, they were not paid. They're going out there promoting this candidate because they feel like this is the best candidate. However, if someone is paying you to do something and you're out there, I mean, and once again, I've seen it, I've heard it. I won't even go into some of the stories that I have seen with my own eyes and even heard from various uh, people who have witnessed those things, various political candidates over years. People are out there basically elbowing and uppercutting, you know, not literally, maybe not literally, I, you know, I don't even know, but, you know, people are just running up to people, bombarding them, saying, okay, you stay in this one. Oh, yeah, you vote for this one. Oh, forget that person. And actually would talk negative about the other individual. 
And I'm not going to say no names. I think a, a few years back, there was a big, you know, controversy of, you know, somebody was disrespecting, uh, you know, some people out there. People, you know, people brought their families into it. People almost got into scuffles because these people out there were so adamant about making sure that the people who paid them or who paid Mr. Broadhurst got their money's worth by them getting out and showing or, 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 or influencing the vote. Now, I asked around, and once again, I've never met Mr. Broadhurst. I'm only going off of what I've known and seen and heard. And actually, I'm going to pull up an article from 2016 where it has been proven that candidates actually pay this man to be endorsed by his political machine. Now, um, someone told me that, you know, Mr. Broadhurst uh, was a, a, a very um, great man. He, they said he would assist older women from going to the polls and taking them to the polls to vote, right? And it was said to me that uh, at one time, uh, the older woman said, well, you know, Mr. Broadhurst, it would be more helpful if we knew who to vote for or, or we knew even who were weren't running. Now, it was at that point in time that Mr. Broadhurst developed the sample ballot. And in 2019 was the first time that I heard of the Broadhurst ballot. And this is the ballot, once again, that people have paid to get on. This sample ballot, and if you don't know what a sample ballot is, it's a ballot with all of the candidates who are running. And if I'm not mistaken, they have both sides of the candidates who are running. But on this sample ballot, the names who they want you to vote for is shaded in. It's shaded in. So when they hand the people who don't know who they want to vote for this ballot, they look at the ballot and all the people who have paid Broadhurst and all the people who Broadhurst endorses or wants to vote for, those tabs and those circles are bubbled in. So therefore, when people go in there, only thing you have to do is look at the sample ballot and follow through with who is shaded. Now, first of all, it is my opinion that if the person doesn't know who they're voting for or doesn't even know who's running, then they don't have any business voting. That's just outright, you know, because that doesn't reflect what the voting process is for. The voting process is for you to select the best individual whom you feel that is right for this job. But if you don't even know the candidates, don't even know who's running, and you're just going out there swiping uh, or filling in a ballot off of what somebody told you or off of name recognition, then the political process is not doing what it's supposed to do because people are supposed to make an informed decision on these matters. And therefore, the whole, you know, process, in my opinion, if this how it is being run, is definitely skewed. It's flawed and almost corrupt. So that leads me to ask, you know, who is behind Broadhurst? Now, I've been, you know, wanting to make this video for a long, for a long while. And I had to make it today because once again the election process is 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 underway i think we have like a week to go but i was motivated today from a post by dr david craig now it was a public letter and i'm on his facebook page now and i should have screenshot it but i didn't but I'm going to paraphrase the post. Um, that, that's my guy, and he wrote it. You know, he's always been a man who speaks his mind. So I'm going to, I'm going to show you what I read and, and very, um, you know, very paraphrasically. That's a word. I just, I'm, I'm going to tell you that's a word. Very par paraphrasically. I'm going to say you, but, but just the first paragraph of the letter. And he said, well, you know, this is... Um, you know, this is Dr. David Craig. This person 
at the polls who he had a riff with. He said this person is um, is a campaigner for Mr. Clifton Broadhurst. Now, he said Clifton Broadhurst, and, and I'm, quote, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but if you saw the earlier post, somebody probably screenshot it. I, I think somebody maybe even screenshot it and sent it to me. Sent it to me, but I went on the face his his, his thing and read it um, verbatim. He said, "Mr. Broadhurst is a political operative who pays, and this is his words, paraphrasing. He pays black people to get other black people to vote for white people." Now, those were Dr. David Craig's words. Now. I can't say that he's so far from the truth because once again, in 2019, there was, there was certain factions running and I would go out there and I would see a lot of my black brothers and sisters advocating for, you know, the white counterparts, which once again, I, I don't have a dog in the fight, so I don't care who you advocate for. But now it's clear to me why they were so adamant about doing so because they were paid by Broadhurst to endorse these candidates. Now, maybe um, those candidates were the best people for the job in that in that arena. However, um, Dr. Craig's statements ring true in, in, in that regard because I saw a lot of, and, and once again, I saw both candidates as great candidates, but I'm like, why are all these, you know, black people advocating for, you know, um, their white counterparts. And once again, I don't care. Um, you know, yeah, if anybody knows me, like I said, I, you know, I, I love everybody. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I and, but, but I'm very pro black, but that doesn't mean I'm anti white. So let's get that straight too. But nevertheless, that was Dr. Craig's statement. And he went on to say some other things. He, he went to mention some names and I'm not going to mention those names because once again, I've interviewed a lot of the candidates. I think all of them are great people who have a passion for the city. However, if that is the practice that is going on, once again, it makes me question the validity of the political process. Maybe this does go on all over the world. Maybe this does go on in other states and other countries. Maybe this does go on in the, 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 the White House presidential races. But that doesn't mean it's right. I, I, maybe I'm stupid, right? Maybe I should think that people should just run without paying people to, to advertise for them and just make the best person win, right? Maybe I'm stupid. Maybe, you know, and maybe people should get out there and knock on doors themselves to make people know who they are, you know? That's just, maybe I'm just a dreamer, right? You know, changes, like my man Tupac said, right? But anyway, so nevertheless, that is what, you know, my concern is where we have political candidates who are being paid for or, you know, or, or, or actually paying for this elaborate endorsement team, this elaborate political machine to ensure that they get into office. And like I said, um, I heard about the Broadhurst ballot in 2019 and just to give you an example of how much power or how much influence this person has i was talking to one candidate and you know this candidate was getting flack because he was on the broadhurst ballot but he was also on pretty much let, let's be honest it was the black ballot you know all of the black people were on this ballot and all of the broadhurst people and I'm, I'm sadly to say most of the candidates on the Briarhurst ballot were white. But this one particular candidate was on both ballots. And he was getting flat from the, the black faction, you know, because, you know, he wasn't on that ballot. But throughout that process, I learned. I was like, why, why is everybody mad? And then, you know, um, you know, they began to explain to me about the Briarhurst ballot and, you know, how... Uh, it was, I guess, a privilege to be on that ballot. And, you know, at that time, I didn't realize that people had to pay. But, I, of course, it, it makes sense once once again. But one particular candidate during that time told me, he said, well, Broadhurst told this one candidate that was running for one particular office, right? 
He told this one candidate, don't run for this office this year. Don't run for this office this year. But if you wait for the next race for this office, you will win. That's what he told the guy, allegedly. Now, all of this is allegedly. This was told to me, you know, by people inside the circle. He told this one particular guy, look, don't run this year. Let this guy run and win. And then next election, you'll run for this office and you will win. Does that sound like democracy? Does that sound like uh, p p p p political delegation? Does that sound like a fair and equal and equitable election where one man can tell another candidate, don't run this year, but if you run next year, you'll win? Maybe I'm stupid, right? <laughs> but that doesn't seem like a fair and equitable election. That doesn't seem like fair and equitable uh, system. So that just shows you, and once again, I have to admit that that political candidate lost that election and, you know, that that political candidate, you know, went on to do some other things, but um, it baffled me and, it's, and it still baffled me where, you know, you got this and once again, I don't, I don't know how he got in this position, but once again, it, 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 it behooves me to think. Who is behind him? You know, because we all know, you know, that, 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 you know, there are certain factions who want, you know, certain outcomes as, we, as, as we've seen, you know, throughout political history. You know, a lot of corruption, a lot of deception, a lot of deceit, a lot of uh, paying, you know, for, for, the, for, for those things. So who is behind you know, Mr. Broadhorse, or has he built this system? But also, you know, is it truly a pay-for-play scheme? And I'm going to give you an example. Uh, here's an article from 2016. And now, of course, okay. Okay. Boom. This Now, this article says, and this is from 2016, from the Goldsboro News Argus. Candidates cry foul over sample ballot. Now, they have a picture of the sample ballot. And that is the sample ballot. I, I'm not even going to try to show it to y'all once again. But this says that the sample ballots are being paid for by Clifton Broadhurst, who has worked this year's campaign for the District of Court Judge and at Turek Stackhouse's opponent. Now, this is once again Broadhurst's influence in a judge, a district court judge's race. But nevertheless, it goes on to say that the green ballot um, it's checked all the way down um, by Democrats from Cl Hillary Clinton um, school board. Okay, it said it, except for Stackhouse and candidate members Raymond Smith and other people. So I guess Raymond Smith didn't pay Broadhurst that year, um, so he wasn't on the ballot. It said. It it, it, it it puts checks by the names of all the Democrats from Hillary Clinton on down, except for Stackhouse and school board candidate Raymond Smith Jr. So evidently, Raymond Smith Jr. didn't pay Broadhurst that year. And so that's why his name wasn't on the ballots. Now, the woman handing out the Broadhurst ballots at the, at the Board of Elections said that it was only a sample ballot. Yeah, it's only a sample ballot, but to the layperson, they're going to look at that and say, okay, this is who I need to vote for. Um, and it goes on to say later in the article that Broadhurst said that Ms. Turret had approached him about helping her. Now, this is a twofold thing because once again, if Broadhurst has a reputation of helping candidates, 
then of course people are going to approach him. And it said in the article, he said, Broadhurst confirmed that Mrs. Turek paid him $4,000. And uh, he said, she can pay me as much as she wants to, as long as she reports me. I'm not going to get myself in trouble or you if you are a candidate, which basically sounds like he's playing by the rules, which these rules are skewed. So basically, um, they're paying for, but it's telling because they said Mr. Broadhurst, uh, I mean, she approached Broadhurst. But from the information that I have been getting, um, you know, it's well known what Mr. Broadhurst does. So he puts out a filler or, or someone not Broadhurst exactly may approach a candidate and say, hey, you know, Mr. Broadhurst is probably somebody you would want to connect with if you want to win this office. And therefore, you know, the person would quote unquote approach him. But we all know, you know, from what I just told you that it may not be that way. And, it, and the article goes on, you know, with Stackhouse saying, you know, that this is, this is kind of misleading. Um, people, uh, I think, uh, he is Broadhurst defended it. Broadhurst, who said he printed and paid for the ballots, denied telling voters the ballot showed Democrats only. I have a sample ballot, and I can tell you what I tell my people to tell everybody. Okay, that's what he said. He said, I can tell you what I tell my people to tell everybody. Once again, he's paying people to go out and endorse these candidates, whether they are good or candidates or not. And it's funny because I just called an old homeboy of mine. We, I used to know him in the streets. Now, you know, he has went through some things. He's changed his life. I saw him out the polls one day. I didn't know what he was doing, right? I thought he was just out there ch chilling, helping a relative. So he messed around and called me yesterday. And I said, yo, what's up, man? What's going on? He said, nothing, man. Did you see the game? And, you know, we small talk for a minute. And I told him, well, you know, I was in a conference. But he said, okay, well, and I said, um, I said, you ain't out there at the polls today? He said, nah, man, uh, Broadhurst ain't called me yet. You know what I'm saying? Or, or unless Broad, he said something to the fact of, unless Broadhurst called me, then I'm not going to go. And so once again, that put the, put the got my wheels to turn. Like, okay, this guy has a whole entire machine. Now, once again, these people that are handing out those ballots are going to tell you that this candidate is the best candidate. Yeah, vote for vote for him or her. Don't vote for him or her because you know they're bad and they'll they'll go. I mean they'll they'll tell you something about their, their marital history <laughs> or you know what I'm saying they, they'll tell you something about you know their their financial history. You know what I'm saying they'll tell you some things that you probably shouldn't know about the individual in a political place. But what they won't tell you is that I'm being paid to tell you who to vote for. And that's a problem. When you got unsuspecting voters, maybe you got somebody who's voting for the first time, just want to get involved in the political process. They maybe even have an idea, but they may be on the fence. But if they see someone such you, such as those paid electioneers that are out there with ballots and, you know, they're, 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 they're handing them out and there's, Gung ho, and they know all the information. They know, you know, where you where you vote in what district, and they know who's your candidate, and they can influence you and sway you. But they're being paid by this, and and this is just one article, um, about that mentions uh, Mr. Broadhurst. So once again, I, I'm not seeing, you know, he's a bad guy. I've never met him, you know. I, from what I understand, he's a very smart man, a very astute man, uh, very business savvy, and, and evidently he's very political savvy. But, you know, I, I do have to question, you know, his motives when, you know, I if someone comes to me and pays me to endorse them or to provide advertisement for them or to, for, for, for me to send my political team as a force for them to win an election. That doesn't mean I necessarily think that they're the best candidate. 
you know, that maybe they pose me, pay me the most money. As he said in the article, look, Miss Turk can pay me as much money as she want to, long as she reported. So, um, I hope this video makes sense, you know, to people because, you know, I, I've seen these things and I've seen this election turn friends into enemies, um, associates into to rivals. You know, I, I, I've just seen people, you know, have to call family members out there because, you know, it's so intense. And once again, is it intense because people really are passionate and adamant about their candidate or is it intense because money's involved? And if I, if I so-called, if my client wins, maybe I get a bonus. I don't know. You know, I don't know the particular incentives. But I do, do know that people are being paid out there to um, voice uh, their endorsement of these candidates. And once again, because the political process, I think, you know, only 15 percent of the people vote anyway. Right. And so it's sad that, you know, out of that 15 percent, maybe. You know, maybe 5% don't even know who they're coming to vote for, but they're being influenced by uh, this political machine, this political, uh, you know, locomotive that uses, you know, money to influence voters. So that doesn't, you know, that doesn't equate to me as a fair and equal democracy. If that makes sense. If I'm running, I ain't spending no money. You know what I'm saying? Doubt I run. I would never run anyway. But that's that that that's a whole nother that's a whole nother different subject. You know, we have these candidates who come, and and that's my thing. You shouldn't have to pay people who live in your district or 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 you know who who live in your city. You shouldn't have to pay people to go out and tell people who to vote for you. People should already know you. People should already know what you do in the community. You know, you should only have to get out there and stand out there. And when people come out there and see you, they, they run to you. Oh, hey, such and such and such. You're running? What, what district? Okay, I'm in your district. I'm going to vote for you. All right? Or, hey, such and such. You're running? Oh, you're in the district? Oh, my mom lives in that district. I'm going to tell them to vote for you. Not people who are not even running, running up to people, telling them to vote for you because they're being paid. So let's get it right, people. You know what I'm saying? This, this is, and then I see candidates out there. These two candidates who are going to be selected to lead us, but they're out there arguing like cats and dogs. But one of them is going to lead us. I don't want to choose either of them. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense, right? If 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 you are in a a race against your opponent, everything should be amicable. Everything should be respectful. And if your opponent wins, if you believe in the political process, then you should get behind that pro that 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 opponent because they beat you fair and square. And so whatever they need, whatever if you're so passionate about where this city needs to go. You wouldn't let your defeat by that person turn you into a bitter naysayer, one who defames that person. You should suck up, put your big boy drawers or big girl panties on and get up behind that, that, that political uh, official and figure out how you can help them. You know, because you might want to run again or, or, or even if you didn't win. Let me see how you know, I, 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 I can help you help the people that I know. If that makes sense, right? Maybe I'm stupid once again. Maybe I'm dumb, <laughs> you know. But, uh, yeah, this, you know, all of this arguing, all this backbiting and backstabbing is not becoming of any leader who I would want to lead me. So y'all remember that. Um, and, and I think a lot of people feel the same way. That's why I think it's only 15% of the people who are voting because they see past all of this and they see your actions out there. You know, um, and, and one thing I read is it's competition 
is of the kingdom of darkness. But service is of the kingdom of light. And so y'all remember that, you know, in this race of competition, you know, and we see how dark it gets. If you if you guys been at that polls, I've talked to several political candidates over the years, uh, over the past four years, and they just tell me that, you know, they'd be so drained, they'd be so stressed, they'd be so, um, you know, discouraged when they leave those polls because of all the nonsense going on. That's something of darkness, you know, but if you're running for a position of leadership, that should be, you know, uh, uh, an act of, I want to serve. I don't want to beat my opponent. Let my service speak for myself. You know, let my reputation speak for itself. I don't have to tear anybody else down. But nevertheless, I'm not going to preach to you today. But yeah, I do have a question. You know, who is this Broadhurst guy? And who is behind him? Once again, my name is 919-587-7782. Mr. Broadhurst, if you want to sit down and talk about it, you know, give your perspective on it, um, especially on, on how Dr. David Craig feels. And once again, I talked to my boy, David Craig. I think he kind of backpedaled a little bit on what he said because, you know, he gets a lot of flack. And like I told him, I'm like, bro, you know, you, you, you say a lot of things that a lot of people don't want to say. But I, I, I had to say it in this video, my brother. Um, it is what it is, as Cam and May say. You know, I, I don't, you know, once again, everything is my opinion. It's also speculation. Allegedly, we can go all down the list. If I said anything wrong in this video, correct me. But, yeah, I know that, you know, people are paying him. It says it in the article. People are paying. He's admitted to getting paid to endorse certain candidates. So, anything other than that, as Charles Barkley used to say, is uncivilized. But peace and blessings. Y'all holler at me. Y'all let you know, was I wrong? Am I right? Or am I just stupid? Peace and blessings.